Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. I'm very happy to have you here with me today. Today we're going to get a little bit more used to and explore the new data tables that were introduced inside of NNN. It's such an amazing feature. Today I will go through that with you and so that you guys know more about it. So first of all, in case you haven't upgraded, so just upgrade your and add an instance to the latest stable version and you will definitely get data tables. Now, what are data tables? So in case, just like you're like me or anyone else, you, in terms of database, you're going to use whatever is available or whatever is free or whatever is reliable. The database is somewhere where you would put all your information. Like for example, if I go to my table here is called sales for example i have a table here so this is a database this is a place where i store information in a table manner okay i can always retrieve it i can always get it i can always search for information i can make charts out of this it's very 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 essential to doing any automation is to have a place where you can store your data okay so so, so far, we've been using Google Sheets. Some people have been using Airtable. Some people have been using SQL. Lots of available options. But most, I think most people would use Google Sheets just because it's available and it's free. Now, of course, Google Sheets comes with a price. Of course, not like money price, but rather is productivity and issues when it comes to authentication when it comes to rate limiting when it comes to all of these things and also speed okay now if if you are a make user initially just like myself you you are familiar with with data tables or with data sources back in make because we had that feature as a, you can create tables and you can access them now and it has introduced a similar feature to that so these database, these data tables are part of N8N. So that on its own gives it a lot of advantage. The advantage is, first of all, it's free. It comes with N8N. So you don't have to pay any subscription for that. Second of all, it's not calling an external API. So you don't need to authenticate. You don't need to wait for the request to come back. It's all within N8N. So it's very fast. It's inside it's built in and you don't need to authenticate or do any of that stuff so it's definitely more reliable it doesn't give you any issues with limiting you it doesn't give you any issues with the request coming out of it and then coming back to it so it's it's a lot it's it's a lot more versatile lots more a lot more flexible you can add as many rows as you as you want so all of these positivity of course there are some downsides which the currently it's still like the beta feature so they're still building it so right now visually it's not like uh, like what you get with with google sheets it's more bare bone so if i go to here and i uh, click on this and i can create a new table right so let's create a new table here and here i can name the table let's name it for example sales two. So if I create this table, I'm now in this view. It initially it gives me a couple of uh, a, a couple of rows to 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 deal with. The first one is the ID row here. So the ID row is just like row number if you know inside of inside of Google Sheets. So the, this is a this is a, a column that we cannot control. It's just a, a number that iterates, like the, in, it increases in a number as you add rows. It will start from the number that you had before. So if you deleted one to 10 and you start adding new rows, it will start from 11 and so on and so forth. These created at and updated at are very important ones and they come by default. So you don't have to do anything to that. So you can just later on filter by when it was created or when it was updated. So these are very helpful. So these come uh, initially without you having to do anything, okay? 
And here you can add rows and you can add columns. So if you want to add another column called, for example, like in our sheet here, if I go, we have product price type and date, for example. And then here we go in here. Uh, let's say product. Now we, now we need to define the type. If you, if you guys are confused by these, go and watch my full my full course on Annet and on YouTube, you'll uh, you'll get more information about that. Here, since we want text, so we'll choose string. We can choose a number, a boolean, which is true or false, or a date and time. So this is only for dates. So let's choose string for that. I'm gonna add column, and as you can see here, it added it here. And then we can add another column is what we had here, which is price, type, and date. So price, it would be a number and then a type, sorry, a column type, it would be a string as well. And then date is here for the date you can specify. You can use a string if you're not using a date format because there's a date format or you can use a date and time one. So it depends on your need, okay? So here I have all of these. As you can see, I added a row by mistake. I can delete this row here, but you can add rows here and add them manually. So you can add them manually here by clicking add and typing here, right? And typing here and typing, and you can add it manually. But I don't think any of you guys are gonna add it manually. I think most of us doing automation, we're gonna add it through, through an automation system, okay? And Basically, to do that is we need we need to set up a complete node system. Okay, so, so if we go to here, data data tables here, I have set up this this whole workflow here to basically go over that. So first, since we created the table here called Sales Two, and we have everything. We probably you guys are probably using uh, Google Sheets before that, and you want to move your data to Google from Google Sheets from here. All of these data, I don't want to do them manually for sure. So I'm going to use them, use it by automation. And to do that, I have set up these uh, Google Sheets, and and I have over here Airtable as well nodes that you can just connect to. So the first one is we'll get we'll transfer from our data table to Google Sheet and the second one will transfer from Google Sheets to our data table. And this is what we want to do at first. So we just select our uh, our Google Sheet here and then here we'll define what we need to do, okay? So here inside of here, so we are we are targeting row and we're, we're going to do an insert. We'll choose our data table here. If we, if we click on it, we'll, we'll see all our tables. And we can also create a new table from here. And here we will map it, map it manually and we'll select everything. And you notice here for the date because, because here inside of Google Sheets, I have a date as a string, right? And in here, I want to take that string and if I put it just as a string, it will cause an error because date field that I just created is, isn't a, a string. It's not a normal text, it's a date format. So to do that, I have to use this expression to transform what I have into a format that accept get, that get accepted. Okay, so let's try to run this. So it, it will take our data from Google Sheets and transfer it to uh, it, it it'll transfer it to. Uh, but first, let me first check the sales because this is another table. So I already have all of these here. So. It will be good to delete everything, but it will it will only delete the first twenty rows. So to do that, I'm going to use quickly use the delete row that I have the 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 node that I have set up in here. I'm going to execute. That will clear up everything, and then I'm going to connect this again. And if I go to sales here and refresh, you will see that everything here is flushed out, which is a great node to use. So now it will take everything and transfer it to to here. And notice here I put bulk optimize, and this is just to make things faster and will only 
it, it will not give me a, a an output for everyone it will just give me one output of what happened okay this makes things quite faster inside of doing these large actions here so if i go here and i refresh now i'll see here then that everything got added inside of our table there you go everything is in in n8n easy to access in our table and here even the date got transformed to a value that it uh, understands so if we go back here to our table here now there is also if you want to transfer from from here right uh, and you, you can transfer from data table to your google sheet exactly the same way that you that we did this in this right okay so it's it's a two path system that you can use now you can do the same thing for airtable if in case you have your account on airtable this is how you transfer these between these are essential actions because data tables are is a new feature probably everyone is using either google sheets or another 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 database and you want to transfer those between okay so a note that we went went through just a little bit ago so we went through get so this gets basically everything you can specify a condition but i don't want a condition i want to get everything and we went through the insert which basically inserts into a table that i specify with 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 the values that i want and this is the delete one we just tried is basically we're deleting and what am i deleting if i want to flush everything I want to have the condition. I'm going to choose ID. I'm going to choose ID and then I'm going to specify that if ID is not empty. So basically, that's everything inside of there, or because ID is an automatic field. And if there's any rows in there, it will basically get deleted. And this is a good way to flush everything. Now, if I want to delete a specific ID, I can just specify here that make it equal to or any id that is less than so then it will delete ids that are less than or if i don't if i want to choose a condition where you are going to delete a specific product or i want to delete a specific price range i can do that okay so this is very powerful here for you to delete quickly now another one is the add row which is quite simple because we, you just need to it's just create adding one row it's the same thing as we did here if we go to if we go here and we add row it's the same thing we do here but we're, we're doing it here through through a through a node and we have we have get row with a condition here so instead of getting everything i want to i can get get a specific get a specific number of items here but if i want if i don't want everything and if i don't want to limit it i can i can here come and specify a condition so i i, I want to get all rows that the price is equal to seven for example if i if i execute that step let's see if i have that step here yeah if i execute that step here and see it gets it got me four items back which with the seven with the price is seven i can say less than less than seven and it gets me everything it's get me 50 items here because i have it limited to 50 item okay if i remove the limit and i can say greater than seven it will get me all items that are greater than seven so 101 items so this is a great way it gets you everything that in terms of and if you can see here the things change based on the type so so if i choose a date then the the conditions change as well very very powerful way of getting uh, items so uh, as i said i can add a row but i can also update a row and the same thing here that goes with uh, with google sheets to update a row first it needs to know what you want to update and in order to do that you need to specify the condition so i want to update the row number for example i give the id or I want to update the row with the product name and you give the product name and then you can update that row what values you want to change about that row okay so always with updating you have a condition because it needs to know what you want to update 
And in order to do that, you just need to set up at least one condition where you specify exactly what you want to update. Okay, so this updates one row and also updates several rows because if you specify a condition that has multiple items, then you're updating multiple items. And be, be careful and, and keep that in mind is you don't have to fill any of that because if you leave the rows like that and you update, then products gets to be nullified. Like products, uh, the product of that, of these uh, will, will have nothing. So always just choose what you want to update. So I want to update all of those with the name, for example, something. I want to update their prices to this. You don't have to add everything here. You only need to update to add what you exactly want to update. Otherwise, if you add a row and you leave it empty, it's going to make it empty after that. So be careful of that. So upsert, which is a strange word to say. <laughs> so basically upsert here is something that you don't find in, in other ones. So it basically updates a row or insert if there's no match. So you need to put a condition and if it didn't find any of this condition, it knows that it doesn't need to update. And in that case, it will just add a new row. So it's it's a, it's a quite a interesting so, something. So here there's if row exists and if row doesn't exist. So if row exists, it will pass in the item, but if it doesn't exist, it won't. So if I execute this one, you will see how I have one item because I have the ID one and it's, it is it is the case. But if I put an ID number 1000 and I execute, it says me no output data. Now, how is this helpful? Because when there's no output data, then you know that if it doesn't output anything here, it will not continue. So the workflow will stop at this stage. But if there is something, it will it will continue because it will give you a an item here so that it continues okay very very powerful tables to, for you to use and they they just get, get you over all of those you know days where you just oh say oh google sheets <laughs> right with the rate limiting with the api and i know people who use self-hosted ones it's it's really a nightmare to to just set up oauth with self-hosted so with this one, you have a database that is inside of NNN and just very, very quick. I didn't show you this piece because it's obvious. Do I need to? Because it, it is inside of NNN. It doesn't, it's not requesting from an external API. So it's definitely going to be faster. All right. So these, these two blocks here is a way to import all your data inside of NNN and to use the data, data tables. And I, and I bet you that these data tables will get better with time. So. Just give them a couple of versions and the next one will be have more features and will probably be more even more visual in this way, better, better visual ways that you can have here inside of NNN. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe for more videos and please check out my community as well. And I'll see you in the next one.